completing this lesson, you should be able to explain when to use the user input task, describe how data flows between this node and the process, and recall the steps for configuring this node. In this lesson, you'll learn how to add a user input task to a process. This node allows you to assign tasks to users with a form. At Acme Automobile, after the registrar completes the start form to add a new vehicle to the fleet, the supervisor is assigned a task to approve the vehicle. Let's configure this part of the process using the user input task. First, I'll find the user input task in the palette under Workflow, Human Tasks. I'll connect it to the process, drag it to the supervisor swim lane, rearrange the end node, and relabel this node to Review Vehicle. Labels make it easier to understand a process model, especially if you work with a team of developers. Next, let's double-click the node to open its properties. First, I'll update the task display name to be dynamic. Supervisors see this name in their task lists, so it's best if it provides identifying details about the vehicle. I'll click the Expression Editor icon and use process variables to append the vehicle year, make, and model to the default display name. Let's save this expression. Now, when this task appears to the supervisor, she will be able to differentiate between tasks because they have unique names. Next, I'll go to the Forms tab to add the approval form. Because I've already configured the form, I'll start typing the name of the interface and then select it from the list of auto suggestions. When you add an existing form, you'll be asked if you want to automatically create node inputs to match the interface's inputs. I'll click Yes, and you can see that the Rule Inputs table now contains the rule inputs from the associated interface. If you later have to edit the rule inputs in the interface, you need to return to this tab and click Refresh to update the rule inputs. In this example, the supervisor approval form has two rule inputs, vehicle and supervisor approval. These rule inputs are now also node inputs. If you recall an earlier lesson, node inputs and outputs, also known as activity class parameters, are variables that are unique to a specific node. To pass the values from node inputs to the next node, you need to save them using process variables. Next, let's go to the Data tab. As you can see, the approval decision and vehicle inputs were auto-generated for me. However, I still need to configure these node inputs to save that data back into the process. If needed, you can also create node inputs by clicking New Input. To map the data, you'll use the Value and Save Into fields. The value field is used to display data in the interface, and the save into field is used if the user enters new data and you want to save it back into the process. Keep in mind that the save into field is only used with user input tasks. To configure the vehicle node input, I'll click the dropdown for the value field and select the vehicle process variable. You can also use the expression editor for this field. This way, the vehicle data will be displayed in the supervisor's form. I'll leave the Save Into field blank because the supervisor won't edit the vehicle data. To configure the Approval Decision node input, I'll go to the Save Into field and select the Approval Decision process variable. This way, the supervisor's response will flow into the process. Now, all inputs are mapped to process variables, and I am ready to configure the Assignment tab. In this example, the supervisors are tasked with reviewing vehicles, so I'll assign this task to the app's supervisors group. Finally, let's discuss the Escalations and Exceptions tabs. Tasks have the potential to live for a long time if a user does not complete the task. To avoid this situation, you should always configure either an exception or an escalation. They ensure that the process will not get stuck in limbo if the user fails to act. If you configure an escalation, the task will remain active, but you can reassign it or send a reminder to the original task owner. 
if you configure an exception, the task won't be active any longer and the process will skip to the next step. Let's configure an exception for the new vehicle process to skip the approval step if the supervisor does not respond within 48 hours. In the Exceptions tab, I'll click Timer, add a description, and then configure the exception to trigger after 48 hours of inactivity. Once you have a trigger, add an exception flow to the process by connecting the exception marker to the node where you want your process to skip to. For now, I'll connect the exception flow to the ends node. Once I add more nodes, I'll reconnect it to a different one. Now, this user input task is fully configured before continuing, remember that you should debug your process after each node, so let's save and publish, and then start process for debugging. I'll click Refresh for this process to continue. As you can see, the Review Vehicle node is green, which means it's active. If a node fails, you'll see it outlined in red. To complete the approval form, Right-click the node and select View Form. As you can see, the form displays the vehicle data I added in the Start Form, so the data has been passed to this node. I'll accept the task and approve the vehicle. You can see that this process is now highlighted in blue, which means it completed successfully. You should also check process details to verify that the data is saving correctly. In the Variables tab, I can see that the approval decision now has a value true. This is what I expect because the approval decision is a Boolean value. If I reject the vehicle, the value will be false. Remember that at this point, none of the vehicle data that I typed into the forms has been saved to the database. This step won't happen until I add the right records smart service to this process model. Let's recap. The user input task allows you to assign form-based tasks to users. Use the form tab to add an interface to your user input task. Use the data tab to map the node inputs to process variables so that data can pass into and out of the form. Configure the value field to display data to the user. Configure the save into field to flow the new data from the form into the process. Use the Assignments tab to assign the task to a specific group of users. And always use exceptions or escalations to handle tasks that haven't been completed on time. <laughs> <laughs>